this is, I want to share this with you guys. Um, my time in the morning and it, it is so precious. My time with God is so precious in the morning. Um, and, and I want you guys to develop a, a life of prayer, a life of listening to God's voice, reading God's word, understanding what he's saying to you in your time of prayer with him and your walk with him. Because the more you center up on him, the more he's going to show you and expose to you what he has for you. And so this morning, we're going to go through a little segment just, just of, of how I start my morning. And, um, and, I, and, and I'm just going to, we're going to play a little clip of a audio clip. It's like 11 minute clip. So it's part of my message is, is the, um, Genesis chapter 24, which is amazing story about servanthood. Amazing story about servanthood. And, and I, had, I had Faye come up here first because she is a prime example of, of a servant, unconditional. She never asks for anything. She just serves. She don't ask in return. She just serves. And so if, <laughs> just know it's, it's important to serve God and serve him well. And so when I wake up in the morning... I go and I get quiet with God and I just hear, I try to hear, I just shut everything out and try to hear what he's saying to me for the day, what he wants for the day. I, I don't wait late into the day to get into my prayer time because if I do, the cares of life come, everything comes and starts getting thrown at me. And then I, then my prayer is like a quick, quick prayer instead of an intimate prayer with God in the mornings. So that's why I like, I choose, and I'm not saying you have to choose in the morning, but it's, I feel like it's one of the best times to enter into prayer and, and reading of God's word because your mind is fresh, it's ready, and nobody's thrown a bunch of stuff at you already. The cares of the world haven't attacked you yet in the morning. And so, um, so we're going to, we're going to, Listen to this audio clip, and the reason I'm going to have this audio clip read the whole because it's the whole chapter, but it just it's dramatized, and and the words will be on the screen as well because I like to read as I'm listening to the Word of God because it's coming in my eyes, I my eye gates, and it's coming into my ear gate, and I get that double whammy of the Word, and I get to just to just to see what He's doing, and then I dissect it, and I ask, what are you talking about in this scripture? What are you saying? Who are you talking to? All these different aspects of the Word. I just go into all the breakdowns of, of the Word, and sometimes it's chapters, and sometimes it's verses, but this morning we're going to do chapter 24 of Genesis, so follow along on the screen, and thank you guys for being patient with me. Let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, We're gonna filled her pitcher, this. There was and some came technical up. Difficulties. And so the servant this ran to meet her and said, Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please, put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. 
And the servant said to him, Perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land, he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now, let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened before he had finished speaking, but behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please. Let me drink a little water from your pitcher. Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent, so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a golden nose ring, weighing half a shekel, and two bracelets for her wrists, weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. We have both straw and feet enough, and room to lodge. Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to the man by the well. So it came to pass, when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man, and there he stood by the camels at the well. Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. Then the man came to the house, and he unloaded the camels and provided straw and feed for the camels, and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, 
I will not eat until I have told about my errand. Speak on. I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And to him he has given all that he has. Now my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell, but you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, Perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way, and you shall take a wife for my son from my family and from my father's house. You will be clear from this oath when you arrive among my family. For if they will not give her to you, then you will be released from my oath. And this day I came to the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will now prosper the way in which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water, and I say to her, please, Give me a little water from your pitcher to drink. And she says to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. But before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down to the well and drew water. And I said to her, Please let me drink. And she made haste and let her pitcher down from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give your camels a drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camels a drink also. Then I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milka bore to him. So I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists. And I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either bad or good. Here is Rebecca before you. Take her and go, and let her be your master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass, when Abraham's servant heard their words, that he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Then the servant brought out jewelry of silver, jewelry of gold, and clothing, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. And he and the man who were with him ate and drank and stayed all night. Then they arose in the morning. Send me away to my master. But her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten. After that, she may go. Do not hinder me since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away, so that I may go to my master. We will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? I will go. So they sent away Rebecca, their sister and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, May you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands. And may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Then Rebekah and her maids arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of Bealahiroi, for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked. And there 
the camels were coming. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. For she had said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Let's pray. Abraham again took a wife, and her name was... Yeah, Father, we just thank you. God, you're so amazing. We glorify you this morning, Jesus. Your word is so powerful. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for the stories of the Old Testament that can testify of the truth of who you are in the new. The stories that inspire us to become greater. Not because we get things, Lord, but because we serve you and we serve you well and we understand what it means to be servants. Father, we thank you this morning that you know everyone here. God, you know their hearts. You know what they struggle with. Father, I ask this morning that you would just open our hearts to hear what you have to say. That we soak it in. That we understand it. And we take it for our own. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, good morning. Thank you guys for um, listening to that. Some of you, it might have been the most Bible you have read. So you have now read a chapter of the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Maybe not. Maybe you all have been through it several times. Um, I know I have. There's plenty in the house that have been through it several times. My focus today I want to talk to you about is serving. Serving well. We, we've got some different aspects in this whole chapter of serving and what it means to serve and what it looks like to serve and the blessing of serving. So starting at chapter one or 24 and verse 1, it says, When Abraham was old and well advanced in age, the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. Somebody say all things. That means all things that you lay your hands to. He wants to bless them. He wants to bless you abundantly above all. And that's what he did. That's what he promised to Abraham. But Abraham served God well. Abraham served God first, and then he served others. And that's how we should be. We should serve God first, and then we serve others outside of serving him. He should always be the center of your life. He should always be the center of your talk. He should always be the center of everything that you do. Any decision that you make, God should always be the center of that. In this story, listen, down to, to verse 10, all the way down to verse 10, and I'm not going to read the whole story again, but down to verse 10, this is not just an ordinary trip that this, this gentleman's taking. This is his, this is Abraham's top dog, top servant, and this is not just an ordinary trip that he's taken. This is about a 17-day trip that he's getting ready to embark on. Chapter 10, or verse 10 says he's got 10 camels that he lined up to take with him and all the other servants that go with that. These camels are packed down with all kinds of equipment and stuff to get from point A to point B. It was about 550 miles that they traveled. 
So this is just not a cross-town thing to go and get a um, bride for my son. This is an endeavor with the entourage of men and women to come and help in this endeavor. But what this is, is this a servant that is a servant of Abraham doing whatever his master says. And you've seen in different times when this scripture was read that, that the servant served God first. And then he served Abraham. He always went back to God. But he referred to and honored Abraham in such a matter that he honored Abraham as, as his God. And he refers to him as his God. Because Abraham was older than him or, or in, in a different place than he was. And he just referred and honored that position that Abraham was in. But this was a long journey. And God has us on a journey. Some of us short and some of us long. But he wants us to walk the fullness that he has for us in this journey. We cannot continue to just sit and just go, okay, I'm going to go to heaven. Or my goal is to get to heaven. We have so much more to do than just going to heaven. And we've talked about time and time again. You know, Shelly this morning had to get covers for, for um, kids' class, for Sunday school class. We're five years, almost six years into this. We should not have to be getting people to cover for the pastor's wife to go in and teach the kids. We should already have an entourage of people waiting in line to serve. If it sounds like I'm getting on to you this morning, I'm not. I just want to make it clear where we stand and what we need in this house. We need a house of servants. A house of people that honor one another, that serve God first and then serve each other. Sometimes when you serve each other, it might cost you something. When you serve your brother or sister, it might cost you some time. It might even cost you some money. And that's okay. That's okay when you serve and it costs you something. Because God's going to pour into that and he's going to bring out of that everything that he has for you. If he's first and he's sinner, he's going to take you in places you never thought you would go. Places you never thought you would ever see, he's going to take you there. Shelly and I traveled for several, three years with Pastor Todd Smith. I love that man to pieces. But we never asked ever for one dime. We paid for our hotels. We paid for our travels. We paid for our food. We paid for everything. Never once did we say, Pastor Todd, we need you to redeem us for this. We served unconditionally. We would go and we would sit at the back of the room and Pastor Todd would text us and say, where are you at? We're in the back of the room. He said, come up front. We would always wait for him to call upon us. But he knew that whatever he needed, we would be there to give to him. If he needed a glass of water and said, Jason, will you give me a glass of water? I would hurry and run. As the scripture said, these guys ran. There was a lot of running. They ran here and ran there, ran up the, down the well and ran back up. And the brother ran out and they all just ran. A lot of running going on. And I would do that for Pastor Todd. I would run. Shelly would run. We would do whatever he said. If he said, carry my Bible, I would carry his Bible. It didn't matter what he said to do. I didn't question it. If I would question it, I would question the detail to make sure it was right. Well, I understood what he was saying to do so I could get it right when I did it and not get it wrong. And this here in this scripture, this is what he's talking about right here. When the servant is talking to Abraham here, he's asking the question, well, what if she don't come? Because he needs to be clear on what's going to happen. Abraham's saying, do not take my son to that city. Do not take a bride from the city where I stay, but get him a bride from the city where I came from, but do not let him go there. He's laying down what he wants, and now the servant is saying, okay, what is I want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly, that I cannot take him back there, but I need to go there and get a woman I've never met in my life and have her to come back and marry your son whom she's never met. So he's got a question. That's a legit question. I mean, I would kind of question that too. This is what you really want. So Abraham explains to him and says, these are the things that happened to me when God called me out of my land. These are the things that happened to me. And then surely God is going to send an angel before you and he's going to prepare the way. 
This is how God works. He's always, if you're the center of his will, if you're in the center of God's will, and then you're serving other people, he's always going to prepare the way. Even if it costs you, he's always going to prepare the way for you. And that's what's happening in this. So he's, here he goes, and he's, and he's telling him what he needs him to do, all the way down to verse 10. And then at verse 10 it says, and he took 10 of the camels. And they went on that long journey, and they got there, and they got to the place where they were going, beside the well. Can we put the picture of that well up? And then this guy, you know he's praying all the way. But you've seen that he said, thank you, God, for, for honoring my servant, or my, my master. Thank you, God, for honoring my master, Abraham. He's constantly thanking God. He's not thinking, man, he's been blessed. I want to be blessed. Man, give me something that they're getting. He's not complaining or griping about anything. What he's doing is he's saying, God, bless him even more. Bless him even more. He got a check in the mail. Hallelujah. Bless him. Give him another check. Not, where's my check? Where's my blessing? What do I get out of this? Never once did you hear any of that in this whole scenario. And then he goes, and he gets to the, to the well, and this is what the wells look like, and, and there's the stairs coming down. And it might not have been this deep. This is a well from that area that they came from. And um, so it might not have been this deep, but he's there by the well, and he lays this fleece out. I mean, he's asking God. He's telling him about this thing. He says if this woman comes out, talks about a virgin woman. It goes down a little further and it talks about that he knew that she was a virgin woman. And so here he is, he's saying, God, I needed to go down like this. And it's okay to lay a fleece out. It's okay to lay a fleece out and say, God, I need you to, I need this to happen because I want to be clear. When we moved into this building, I laid a fleece out. I said, God, I'm not touching that building. I'm not touching that building until you show me that you're going to pay for it. I won't touch it. I won't sign a contract. I won't touch it. We'll stay in this other place. We'll just, we'll just overpack it and have four services. But I'm like, I'm not touching it. But God made a way, and he opened the door, and he, and he showed me that he already prepared a way in the hearts of people that don't even come to this church. He already prepared the way. The angel already went before and talked to them beforehand you see this many times in the scripture where the angel of the Lord or an angel would go before and he would prepare a way for the upper room, for everything that goes on, the donkey that come and Jesus rode on. The angel went and prepared a way. They already knew what was going down. So you know, Rebecca already knew something that was going down. She was the first one that showed up at the well and before he could even finish what he was saying, before he could even finish his little um, prayer to God, Rebecca pops out. And he sees her, and he's excited. He's like, there she is. The first one. The fir that God answered it like that, the first one. Here she comes. Rebecca comes walking in on the scene, carrying a pitcher. She goes down, comes back up, and it says he runs over to her. And he asked her, give me to drink. And she said exactly what he asked for. I'll give you <laughs> I'll give you to drink and your camels as well until they're full. Do you know how much water a camel can drink in one setting? About 30 gallons. About 30 gallons. They travel, they can travel without water up to 17 days. Here they are traveling about 17 days. I don't know if they got a drink along the way, but I know they were thirsty. So they got there, and she said, I will give them water until they are finished drinking. This is her. It goes from him being a servant to his master, now her being a servant, calling him master. Never met the guy before, but she said, yeah, you can have a drink, and I will give your camels a drink as well. So you can imagine a five-gallon bucket of water is about 30, 46 pounds, a five-gallon bucket. So if her little pot was five gallons... And she went down and came back up and gave those, if those, those camels were exhausted, they needed that water, that would be 30 gallons per camel, 10 camels, that's 300 gallons of water. That's 60 trips, 60 trips with a 46-pound jug on your shoulder 
down to the well and back up and it says she ran. I want to be that kind of servant. She ran. Never met this guy before. But she went all out to serve him. It cost her something. I'm sure her calves were worn out. I'm sure her body was worn out. I'm sure she was out of breath. But she was excited for some reason. There was something happening. She felt it. And she was excited. And that's the way I get when I serve. I get excited. I'm like, God, you're doing something in this. That's the way Faye is. She gets excited. She's exhausted. There's times that you, you, if you guys know Faye, there's times she's just exhausted. We are too. But can you imagine running down back and forth 60 different times? And so while she's doing this, the servant is over here and he's pondering all this. He's like, I know, God, you answer your prayer, but man, you like, this is quick. You like answer me like right now. Like you just, this is like a right now answer to prayer. And he's pondering all this. Is this the right thing? Is this what's really, is this really happening in front of my eyes? Is this really happening? And it was happening. He was serving well, and she was serving well. He put a nose ring on her. He put bracelets on her, 10 shekels of gold and bracelets. That was just the beginning. Her brother comes out. Now her brother is honoring. This must have been a house of honor, a house of servanthood, because the brother come out. And he said, do you have a place I can uh, rest and s- rest my camels? He's all, he, already, he already had, he had the place prepared. He said, come on in. What are you standing outside for? I already got it ready. I already got a place for you to rest and eat, and I got a place for your camels to, to rest. He already prepared the way. God had already showed them the way it had already been prepared. God has shown some of you. We have to step into the call that God has for us and know that God is going to listen. He's never going to set you up for a fall. He's never going to set you up to fail. When he asked the question, what if she don't come? Abraham knew that that she would. Abraham knew his God. God's never going to set you on a journey to fail. He's never going to set you up to serve someone to fail. When you serve someone, you're going to succeed. And you're going to go places. God's going to take you places. He's going to watch that. He's going to see that. So the brother serves. So now we've got the servant serving his master. Now we've got Rebecca serving the servant's master. Then we've got the brother serving the servant's master. They didn't know Abraham. They were just serving the servant of Abraham. And, he, and, and they're getting ready to sit down and eat. And he says, and, and, and they're like, we're going to eat. And he said, not until I tell you the story. So now he wants to testify of everything that God had said to him or everything that his master had said to him. So he testifies and opens this whole thing up. And so in his testimony, their walls came down of letting her go. Everything, they started going, wow, this is a really good story. Wow, this is a really interesting story. And it involves us and it involves our sister or our daughter. So now you have him saying, I need her to go and marry Isaac, Abraham's son. It would be hard for me to send my daughter away to people I've never met, to a land I've never been, to marry a man I've never seen in my life. But because of the testimony, because of the story, because of how God moved and how Rebecca was so excited about this, how she saw the God in the whole thing. But they said, well, can you hold on a minute? Can we, can we let her just stay here a few more days, maybe 10 days? But the servant said, no, because I have a mission. I have a mission, and I don't want you to get in way of my mission. I need to go now because that's what the mission is. He didn't let them. They wanted to delay. And I believe maybe that's why that, that Abraham did not want to send Isaac there. Can you imagine Isaac going to his own hometown or a place where he was from 
or his family was from in the reunion, the reuniting. And he might have got comfortable being, well, we can just stay here. But that's not what God had for them. That's not what God wanted. So he needed her to go to where Isaac was to fulfill everything that God has. He's got a plan. It's a master plan for you and for me. But we have to walk in our call. We have to walk in everything that he has for us to do and serve well. And he brought gifts. He brought all these things to the family because they knew what was, they pre-planned what was going to go down. And they pre-planned that when she comes back with you, we're going to need these 10 camels. So they already pre-planned the trip to know what they were going to need because she's going to come with her servants. She's not just going to go alone. I mean, these guys all traveled around. It wasn't just like one guy traveling. They traveled with a whole entourage of people and food and water and all this stuff. So 10 camels had to carry them women back to the where Isaac was. What am I talking about this morning? I'm talking about being a servant. I'm talking about taking out of your time, out of your finances, out of your heart, and serve one another with a pure heart, not with it to get something out of it, not with it to get something back out of it. I've got plenty of things that you guys can do. There's plenty of stuff that needs wrapped up here. There's plenty of stuff that needs wrapped up. Now, I feel like this message this morning is because I want to tell you that we're moving to a new level, and we need help getting this level, this glory wrapped up so we can move to the next. Randy and I were talking yesterday. Why can we not see some of the things that other people are seeing? Maybe it's because we're not serving like other people serve. And that's the simplicity of it. When you serve God first and you're centered up with God, He's going to bring people along your way that you get to serve. And by serving them with your whole heart, God's going to start exposing things in you, cleaning things up in you, and He's going to reveal things, and then He's going to bless you. When they went to her, they brought her many blessings. They brought all the family Gold and silver and shrinkers of all types. And Rebecca said, I want to go with them. So she goes back on the journey. 17 days. 550 miles. In the desert, hot as hot during the day and cold as cold in the night. And it just so happened, Isaac was in the center of God's will too because he went out to a certain place to pray. That wasn't just coincidence. That was him being centered with God. Rebecca being at the well was her being centered with God. Abraham's servant being at the well, the time Rebecca showed up at the well was him being obedient to God. And Rebecca sees the man walking, and he's praying. He's out in the field, and he's praying, and she sees him. And she asks the servant, who's that? And he said, that's Isaac. So she puts a veil over her face, and she honored him. And she loved, Rebecca loved her Isaac. But she was a servant first of God, and then of her family, and then those around her. Let's stand up. If you're serving some, serve more. As Faith said this morning, there's blessing in giving, there's blessing in serving, there's blessing in serving, there's blessing in serving. You've seen this. He served, goes there. She served, provided everything that Campbell's need, include housing and food.
they return, give her gifts and give her family gifts. You see how God works? He just constantly wants to give, 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 give. But he needs us to serve, 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 serve. And in our serving, he's going to give abundantly above and beyond more than you could ever imagine. If you're not saved this morning, I would love for you to come to the altar and pray. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar and pray if you want to serve more. I would just like for you to purpose in your heart to say, I do want to be a servant of this house, whether I get something out of it or not. Faye, Shelly, and I, Randy and Carlene, Uve, we're tired. And we need, we need some help. I want to thank everyone that does all the little things that you do. I'm not saying that you guys don't serve in a great way. Thank you for welcoming people when they come in, parking people in the cars, cleaning the bathrooms, all these different things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Teaching the kids, thank you, thank you. I'm just saying I don't think that you guys understand that for, for Shelly and I especially, this is 24-7. We get calls at midnight, 1 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. It just doesn't matter. It just goes on and on and on. We tried to get a day away last week, and we couldn't put the stuff down because we don't want to let them down. It was like we, we needed to just lock our phones up, but we couldn't do it. There's just so much that we felt like we had to step in and just keep going. I encourage you this morning, grab a heart to serve. Grab a heart to passionately serve those around you. If you see a brother in need, serve them and serve them well. If you see a sister in need, serve her well. That way we all get some good rest and we can all take a little bit of load on ourselves. Some of our older people in the church they're going and traveling to see people in the hospital. It's like, it's like they're, they're getting tired. They're getting overwhelmed by going to see people. And it's like, you know, it's like, where's our young group at? It's like, hey, I, I want to go and serve at the hospital. I mean, we need a young group. We need a young, fresh group that says, I want to go serve at the hospital. So-and-so's in the hospital. I want to go see him. I want to go pray for him. Rise up into that calling and watch what God does with it. Rise up into that and watch what he does with your life, with your family, with everything that you lay your hands to, he wants to bless. Is there anybody here that's not saved this morning? If there is, I encourage you, come up, please. Don't let this day get by you. Start of a new day, a new thing. God has something for you. Okay, I'm not going to make you come. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you right now. Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. Bro, thank you. You're right down here. You're good, man. You're good, man. What's your name? Skylar. Skylar? Yeah. How old are you, Skylar? How old are you? Huh? 20 years old. Yeah. I was 26 before I met Jesus. Wow, what a beautiful thing, guys. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, the, come here, we're not, we're not done. You're not, we're, we're just introducing you, bro. <laughs> no, listen. Have you ever asked Jesus in your heart to live in your life? Yes, I would. Huh? Have you ever asked Jesus to live in your heart in your life? No. Never have. Yeah, come on. You ready for this today? Because he's going to rock your world. He's going to change your whole life right now. You realize that you're a sinner? Well, the Bible says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And God wants you to just confess your sins to him, not to me, not to anyone here, but he wants you to confess your sins to him and ask him to forgive you of those sins and to come into your heart and live in your life and make you a new creature. So let's just bow our heads, all right? There's no specific prayer, no specific thing that, that, um, that we have to say, but just repeat after me. Father, I know this morning that I'm a sinner. Father, I know this morning I'm a sinner. And I want a relationship with you. I want a relationship with you. And I ask God that you would forgive me of my sins. I ask my Father to forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And cleanse me of all self-righteousness yeah. and character defects. Yeah, character defects, that's good. And Father, that you would come into my heart right now, Jesus. I ask my Father, Jesus, to come into my heart. And live in my life. And live in my life. And make me a new creature in Christ. And make me a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you meant that with everything in you, bro, listen. What's, the angels in heaven are rejoicing like we are right now. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You're a new creature in Christ. So right now, you know, when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, live in my life, you've locked in, you secured an avenue to heaven. And thank God for that, for Jesus dying on the cross for you for that. But there's so much more. Now he wants you to walk in that. He wants you to walk in that because he's got a call for your life. You've been through a lot of stuff in life, I know already. You've been in and out of drugs, alcohol, porn addiction, all these things you've been in and out of. Your whole life because of being without a dad, because of being without relationships, correct relationships. But God's going to change that right now. This is your new family. This is your new family. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to break some things off right now. Father, we thank you right now. We break off abandonment right now in Jesus' name. Father, where his daddy wasn't there for him, his daddy wasn't there to say, I'm proud of you, son. We break that off right now in Jesus' name. We break off poverty mindset in him. God, that he can see himself how you see him. God, his identity will lie in you. Father, it's so precious to have new Christians. Lord, they've not tainted with anything of, of the, the Christian world. But God, they get to come and experience you afresh and new. And we thank you for that this morning, God. We love you. We praise you. Father, we just break off all those things that he's addicted to. Whatever it is, Lord, you know it. We don't even have to name them all out, but we just break them off right now. We say, Satan, you have no authority against this son because this is a newborn son of the Most High King. So we thank you, Father, right now that you are working in his life, you're moving in his life, and that you love him with a love that's untainted. We praise you for that. We glorify you for that Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.